Modern air traffic control systems are surprisingly vulnerable. Today, we're going to take a look at how they work, analyze some of the potential vulnerabilities, and ultimately leverage one of those vulnerabilities as a powerful open source intelligence tool. On today's episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Old school air traffic control systems are based on radar. Now, radar is expensive and inaccurate. It's so expensive that only large commercial airports can afford it, and so inaccurate that air traffic control has to use large safety distances between aircraft. It's for this reason and more that the Federal Aviation Administration has adopted ADSB, or Automated Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. ADSB does away with the need for radar and instead adopts a more decentralized model where aircraft transmit telemetry data and ATC collects it. This allows aircraft to fly closer together and more rapidly take off and land. It's great from a safety and efficiency standpoint. However, it starts to fall apart when you look at the security. Those packets I mentioned, they're in plain text. They're unencrypted and unauthenticated which means anyone can collect them. Anyone can take the data and log it over time and then see not only where an aircraft is, but where an aircraft has been. Then you can take it a step farther and add sensor data like from a smartphone. And you have an app like Flight Radar 24, which employs augmented reality to allow you to scan the sky around you and rapidly identify aircraft. Now, if you find this at all interesting, check out the article in the description below and follow me over to flightradar24.com and we'll get started. Okay, so here we are at Flight Radar 24's website. Now you can see it's already populated with ADSB data. You can start clicking on aircraft and identifying things if you wanted to. Uh, for example, I can go ahead and click on this small commercial jet and I can see this track, which represents where it is and where it has been. Um, and you'll in fact notice that this track is color coded uh, based on the altitude of the aircraft. So you can see it's been from Santa Barbara and it's going to San Diego. It's about halfway through its flight and you can see scheduled and departure times. This could be potentially very interesting if you're picking a friend up from the airport or if you happen to know that a uh, CEO or of a tech company is going to be on a particular flight, uh, you could know when they're landing or when a politician's landing. But to really get the juicy information, you need to have an account. So go up here and create an account. You can use Google, Facebook, Apple, whatever you want to. But when you do create an account, it's going to ask you about subscriptions. The basic plan doesn't really give you much and doesn't even remove ads. You could pay $10 a month if you really get into this, but I wouldn't do it immediately. You can definitely do the seven day free trial and cancel at any time. So I wouldn't pay $500 ever, unless you are a legit business, hardcore using this data. Now, there is a bit of a secret to getting the business plan for free. If you go up here and you add coverage, then you can get this page about creating your own ADSB receiver. Essentially, all you need is a Raspberry Pi and an SDR. If you're in a really remote location, you could even apply for a free receiver. Most places it's not likely that you're going to get one of these, but it's a free piece of hardware if you are in a remote location. Because of course, Flight Radar 24 wants to expand its coverage all over the world to even the most remote locations. So I'm going to go up here and make sure I'm logged in and go back to flightradar24.com. Now, if we start looking at this map, we can start seeing immediately interesting things. Obviously, we have a big cluster of aircraft here, and that's gonna be LAX. And something interesting is, for example, with radar, we wouldn't be able to see these planes on the ground, but ADSB works on the ground, so you can track planes around an airport even if you're not physically located there. 
And if you see these white little trucks, ground vehicles at some airports will have ADS-B equipped on them. So you can also very easily track certain vehicles around an airport, which could be interesting in certain scenarios. Now, looking broader around the city, something's up up here. I don't know what, but five helicopters typically don't hover over one spot. So let's take a closer look and see what might be going on. We have some unknown helicopters. Ooh, that one's hovering around there for a while. But one of these should be an LAPD helicopter. Because what I think's going on here is definitely some kind of police chase is going on around LA, if my suspicions are correct. And so it doesn't take much thought to imagine how someone nefarious might use this kind of data to, to track where a police helicopter is and where it's going around to. That's why I'm not seeing more data. I'm not logged in. So make sure you're logged in. Um, so that's a very important note. Since you can see the map either when you're logged in or not, you can start getting carried away and not be logged in. As you can see, I have the uh, seven day free trial business membership. If you really had to, you could probably make multiple accounts and do that uh, whenever you need important data. If you go over to the left, you can start seeing the more interesting details such as where the data source is for ADS-B. This is important because ADS-B is a line of sight radio communication protocol, which means that the receiver needs to be within line of sight of the aircraft. It's important to note that because as you can see all of these terrain features around LA, if for example, there are a helicopter somewhere in the valley here, we may not see its ADS-B signals if there's not an ADS-B receiver somewhere in these hills because of radar horizon and the way uh, radio waves propagate. Now, something that flight radar and some of the other major collectors of ADS-B data are doing is they're building satellite receivers for ADS-B. So they're small CubeSats that go up in the sky and of course, they have line of sight to virtually every place on Earth, which is how we can be pretty sure that every single ADS-B equipped aircraft is going to be showing up on here. So if you click around, you'll see that not all aircraft are fully populated, but most of them will have picture of the jet, which helps identify and be very useful and your open source investigation searches. If you were at an airport, for example, and you saw a private jet, something like this, uh, leaving, but you didn't have its tail number or anything, you could easily get on flight radar, pull it up, and start looking around. And you'll, you'll notice that there's different icons for the different classes of jets. So a small twin engine commuter jet like this will have a smaller icon, than something huge like this 777, which will be a larger icon. You can uh, also click on the photograph and it'll take you to a more detailed page with larger photos and all kinds of information about that photo, the plane registration. Um, and of course, you could take that registration and go deeper, use Google Dorks or um, other tools uh, to find out more about a particular plane. And you could also use this camera data potentially. But additionally, you're going to see other photographs of aircraft that might be of interest to you. Now, something that I like to do very shortly after I uh, make my account is go over to the settings and fool around with this for a bit. As I mentioned, terrain can actually be important, just to uh, keep in mind for radar horizon and where you might see aircraft. Uh, but you can play around with the day-night line and ATC boundaries, which would be where aircraft transition from being controlled by different air traffic control towers. You can also, if you're familiar with them, go and fool around with aircraft chart 
and airport pins, visibility, all kinds of stuff like that. And in fact, you can customize the way the aircraft are labeled on the map, which can definitely be useful if you're going to keep this up somewhere, so maybe put it on a TV in a lobby or have it on a monitor at home, or if you wanted to keep it on your laptop and monitor for specific aircraft. Uh, you can even add basic weather data, which again could be useful for tracking certain aircraft which won't fly in various conditions. And of course you can go over to miscellaneous and change the units because not everyone uses metric or imperial. But the really cool thing about Flight Radar 24 is when you click on these jets or these helicopters for example, you can go down here and you can click on 3D view. And so assuming this were a police chase, I can now have the exact view that police helicopter has. Now obviously it's not real time data. This is essentially using Google Maps. It can give you a very good idea of the type of thing that this police helicopter is able to see and where um, their horizon would be for them. Now, of course, this 3D view and radar map are not the only way to use Flight Radar. In a minute, we'll use the Flight Radar 24 app to look around and use the augmented reality to identify aircraft. Okay, so here we are with the Flight Radar app open. Uh, when you open up this for the first time, you'll need to go up to the top right hand corner and make sure you have logged in. Now, you can set filters and do all the normal stuff you can do on the computer here. But the really interesting thing that you can do on your smartphone is zoom in and of course click on the top left AR. Now when you click on AR, you're usually going to be prompted with a screen like this which is essentially saying that you want to calibrate your compass. The reason this is important is because it's using the compass to tell which direction you're pointing on the map and help get a judgment of which aircraft it should be displaying. Now, if I start to look up, I'm obviously in the studio here, but if I were outside, I could start looking at the aircraft. Now, it will sometimes show distant aircraft that you really can't see with the naked eye. And if your compass isn't calibrated quite right, then you're gonna be a little off. It could be up in the top left somewhere and then displaying the tag in the bottom. But you can easily click on the aircraft and it should pop up. Sometimes it might be a little weird, not pop up. But when it does, it should pop up like this, and it gives you a clear picture of the aircraft, where it is, where it's going again. So you could easily do this with the police helicopters, for example. Go back to, I'm not finding the uh, helicopters right now, but obviously it could be very interesting in certain situations if you were afraid you're being tracked by police or by someone else, maybe, you don't know who's flying this Cessna or this uh, Cessna Skyhawk. So you can click on it and, oh, I mean, it looks like he's on a pretty straight path. Like, unless that happened to just be the path you're on, he's probably just flying along, minding his own business. So, and of course, you can click on 3D view on that as well and see what he's checking out. But... Again, looks like he's minding his own business. So that's a taste of what kind of open source intelligence you can get. Uh, you can definitely dive deeper into this information and use things like the serial number, the registration, the age, and your other investigations. Flight Radar 24 is an incredibly powerful open source investigation tool. However, they censor certain data like the location of Air Force One and military jets. You can still access that kind of data, but you need to build a custom ADSB receiver. Now, that's really a video for another day. So until then, check out the article linked in the description below. Like, comment, and subscribe. 
Ask me questions on Twitter at the underscore Hoyd. And thanks for watching. Have a nice day.